Hi there, my name is Steve, and I'd like to walk you through how to adjust the points and set the timing on a vintage two-stroke. Um, sort of a bright sunny day here, but we'll see if we can catch it in video anyway. Here's the motorcycle I'm working on today. It's a 1967 Yamaha YCS1C. It's a 180cc two-stroke. Um, there are a couple things about it that are a little different, but basically setting the timing on any of these old bikes is going to be real similar. The first thing that you need to do is check an owner's manual and figure out what the specs are. On this motorcycle, there are two things we need to know. The first, it's a little bit unusual. These 1960 Yamahas have a centrifugal timing retard. Um, most newer bikes will have a time, mechanical timing advance up through the 70s, but this one's a retard. So to set the timing correctly, you need to know that these centrifugal weights need to be wired in the full open position. So that's a little different than some we need to find top dead center. You do that by rotating the engine and as I rotate the engine you can see that the gauge changes. So to find top dead center we want to find the place where the needle stops and turns around. When you install it the gauge can be set at just about anything. So you find the place where the needle stops and turns around right there and then you put your zero on it. Boom. So that's top dead center. Next, we want to do the timing setting. So I'm going to do two millimeters advanced. Two millimeters is 0 0.89 um, inches or 78, 79 thousandths. So let's rotate the gauge around to 70, 5, 6, 7, 8 and a half. A little less than nine and we'll tighten this to keep the face from rotating a little bit. The top dead center now is at 79 thousandths. Now if I rotate the motor here the zero that is where I want my points to open right there. So how do I know when my points are fully open? I'm going to use my multimeter with the buzzer. And again, I'm using the audible alarm. It's not very loud on this multimeter. I have one prong on a good ground. And here on my points, I've disconnected the wires that go up to the coils. I'm doing the left cylinder first. Here the left cylinder comes around to this point right here. So let's go ahead and connect the multimeter. What we want is the engine is before top dead center and rotating it the points are closed as I rotate the motor I want the points to open right at the zero so my points are opening right at the zero setting so this left cylinder is set correctly so let's do the right cylinder now. I'll take my multimeter, come over to the right cylinder lead. Let's unscrew my dial gauge. We'll take a good look at the tool while we have it out. Now on this motorcycle, I made an extension out of a little um, spray bottle hose. It's not as solid as metal, but it works just as good. And I needed it because on the RD350s I do, this tool doesn't quite clearance it. I need something a little bit flexible down there. I'll screw this tool in through the spark plug hole. It's starting to get there. So now it's seated, and those screws are only medium tight here, so this will rotate just a little. There we go. Let's find top dead center. So I take my wrench. The motor rotates counterclockwise, and I'll just turn the motor and wait for my dial gauge to pop up here. There we are. Where's top dead center? It's right there. and we set it to zero. 
Let's double check. Right at zero. Now, I want it to be two millimeters advanced again. So let's rotate this around to 70, 75, 78, and almost nine. Screw, tighten this little knob. And that's where I want my points to open and close. So once again, with the dial gauge set at the zero setting and knowing that top dead center is at 78, 79 thousandths, and with the points plate loosened, I'm going to wiggle this by hand and listen for a beep. I don't know if we can hear this multimeter to get in the right ballpark. I want the place right where it turns off. Beeping and stop. All right, I will finger tighten this just a little bit because everything moves when we're talking about thousandths of an inch the difference between a loose screw and a tight screw changes the timing so again the engine rotates counterclockwise so I'm going to rotate clockwise a little put my multimeter up here so we can hear it and rotate counterclockwise to my zero Ah, that's pretty much right on the mark. Alright, so now let's tighten these screws. And let's double check that the timing didn't shift as I tighten the screws. So that's that. That's how you set the timing using a dial gauge and a multimeter. Now what I need to do is remove my wires, reconnect the wires that go from the points, and just put it all back together. Alright, so we have the spark plugs and spark plug wires connected. We have the points adjusted the timing retard safety wire removed we have the wires connected to the coils again uh, all of our tools are removed and it's nice and safe and of course I put the gas tank back on so let's see if we can test fire it up perfect hey that's nice So there you have it folks, that's how to use a dial gauge to set the timing on a vintage Yamaha two-stroke. It's the same procedure for pretty much all these motorcycles, but this one's a 1967 Yamaha YCS1C180. Thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this will help you guys knock this stuff out. Goodbye.